What's up guys, Kevin Cage back with another XRP update, let's get right into it. First off, I will be talking about Flare, the Spark token again, and this is available on Bitroom now. Links are in the video description if you want to create an account. They have plenty of XRP pairings here on the left, and Flare has just been taking off recently. Just a few days ago, we were at $0.07, cents, $0.08, cents, and now we are at $0.22, cents, and we did get as high as $0.23 cents right here, FLR with the Tether pairing, as well as an XRP trading pair. Now, Bitroom, as you guys know, they are based out of Singapore, very, very friendly jurisdiction for crypto regulations etc ripple does have an office there um, if i have not said already that bitcher does run a validator on the xrp ledger so all good and great happy they have also listed qnt quant as well and I cannot wait for Flare to be available on, you know, websites such as charts.cointrader.pro to eventually develop some, you know, price history, historical data to do some technical analysis with that. And you can see on coinmarketcap.com, we do have Spark here in the ticker FLR. Just reading a little bit about it. Obviously, Spark is Flare's native token. You know, you can collateralize everything, etc. So nonetheless, very exciting. We're going to be keeping a close eye on this and understand that this current Flare is just an IOU. In the months ahead, I'm excited to see additional listings for Flare. And I cannot wait for even more distributions. I know they have started some Flare distributions depending on the exchanges, and it is just a matter of time. So do not be worried um, from what I've gathered, you know, Coinbase, Binance, US, etc. They will still be distributing the Flare token. So I know that's been some FUD circulating. Stay calm, all good, all right? So we went over that. Also, wanted to point this out. So this was circulating yesterday, January 7th, 2021, acting like this just came out like recent news. This is in fact about three years old, just so you guys know. So Saudi Arabia's central bank signs blockchain deal with Ripple. Now, to my knowledge, this is accurate. You guys can see the same, you know, words phrasing verbatim talking about gulf regulators etc um you know bahrain and then you can go right here to reuters where they released this back in february 2018 so roughly three years ago same exact title and a lot of the same phrasing you know gulf regulators new form of financial technology making bank you know faster cheaper more transparent so just be weary of that whenever price goes up because xrp had a nice jump yesterday you know even going from like 25 cents or you know the recent days to 36 cents right now we're trending about 30 cents exact there's always going to be some news that recirculates acting like that's the reason or validates the price move so just be weary of that even though i believe this is still accurate to my knowledge okay so right here, Martin Volk, thank you for tagging me in this. Great researcher in this community is and always sending good information. So we have Flare putting this out. Flare will be integrating Litecoin ahead of the Flare network launch in quarter two. This will allow LTC to be used trustlessly on Flare with Ethereum style smart contracts and gives Litecoin interoperability and composability. Remember this, you know, the phrases, the, you know, the verbiage, even, you know, digital asset investors saying. Flare is, you know, Ethereum 3.0, and I do agree with that. Yes, I hold Ethereum. I do not hold any LTC. Maybe I'm an idiot because it's been doing well, too, and getting these nice pumps with Bitcoin just under 40K right now. We've, we are up 34% in seven days. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. Watch these developments. We can see Flare Foundation token allocation will be reduced so that 5 billion FLR can be distributed to Litecoin participants. Full details to come next week. Now, I encourage all of you guys to continue doing your own research. Of course, Twitter can be an okay source if you're talking to the right people, but sometimes it's just best to you know look yourselves, read everything thoroughly, and understand. So, really cool. They have 58,000 um, followers right there. Some good support in this community, and I think this is really catching the attention of a lot of you know ETH whales, so to speak. So unlocking value, you guys can find out more at flare.xyz. I will link this in the video description at the very top. And we can see right here, you can go when you're on the website. This cooperates with me. All right, it's freezing. Awesome. So you can go right here you can click blogs and read more about that and just get a good breakdown, understand the claim, the ratios and all of that good stuff. Next, so we have Anders L sharing this. So Ripple X product, and we can take a look at this. I wonder what Ripple, the company, are up to. Three open job positions working with central banks in London, New York, San Francisco, also a chief economist and a senior policymaker for APAC. Again, Asian Pacific region, guys. Ripple is showing no signs of stopping by any means. I've already shared my points of view with this lawsuit, the ongoing litigations, and I'll keep you up to date with my honest opinion. And yes, I'm very biased because I hold XRP. I've researched it. Um, maybe I'm seeing through a tunnel, so please be aware of that. I'm not perfect, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm comfortable with my holdings. And let's just be super conservative really quick, and you guys can see some of the recent job postings. I mean, no sign of stopping. London. 
Brazil, of course, which is very, very key to their on-demand liquidity strategy, as they've been said over and over again. Brazil is a key component for ODL. And again, the Brazilian real will become increasingly liquid, one of the uh, BRICS nations as well. I almost said Brazil nations. London, I mean, we have offices there. You know, R3 is copying a lot of these regions. So keep a close eye on them and just a bunch in San Francisco. All right. And remember, Ripple X was formerly Spring or X Spring, as some people say, even though it is pronounced Spring or was in just about, you know, developing on ramps, SDKs on the XRP ledger. Another group you guys are familiar with is Forte in the gaming world. And fun fact, I know I shared it on Instagram. I just got one of those Oculus Quest 2 headsets, those VR headsets. I've played the, you know, I've played it before, but man, it is just surreal when you go in those, you know, VR games. It, uh, you don't want to leave. And if you guys read that Galgatron blog a while back, just talking about the future, where this is all headed, you guys can be conservative if you want, but this is going to happen in the future where, you know, even with real estate and blockchain technology, getting rid of the intermediaries, if I wanted to look and buy a home or property, I would just put my headset on at home and I'd get a virtual reality tour of the property you know, buy the real estate agent and go through that. And if I wanted to, you know, purchase it, I could literally just do like, you know, three or four signatures. It would all confirm itself over blockchain. And as, again, get rid of these 14 intermediaries and middlemen and leeches that are parasites and just, le you know, taking fees over and over again. This future is going to be automated with programmable money. And yes, I believe XRP, Ethereum, and many other assets are going to play a key central role in all of this. And I just can't wait for it to come. But the only, you know, my only fear is that we're earlier than we think if we, we have to wait a little longer. And the way I treat investments, while I'm still ranting, if you guys don't mind, is let's just be conservative with this. And let's say if you cannot buy an asset in this market and, you know, psychologically be comfortable with setting it, forgetting it for two to three years, even five years to be really conservative, Maybe you should not buy that asset, at least with a lot of funds, because if it's to the point where you're checking price every five seconds, like me, you might have a problem like me. And I'm, you know, I'm very comfortable with my XRP decision and long term holdings for that matter. It's one of the most liquid assets in the world in the top crypto projects and one of the very few that has proven itself time and time again with live production, live production. It's not, you know, going on to mainnet. It's it's, you know, had proof of concepts with some of the big central banks years ago years ago before BTC even hit 20k um, so the keywords being live and I think ripple the company and XRP the digital asset are going to make it through these litigations whether there's settlement anytime soon you know I'm keeping up to date with that I'm trying to be careful with what I say because obviously you know I'm not in I don't have a legal background per se just watching a lot of the you know smart lawyers online kind of giving their commentary listening to the Stuart Eldorati general counsel of ripple for years I mean he's I've shown you the clips you know, the SEC ran, what was it, a validator on the XRP ledger. So what is it? Is, you know, the SEC trying to make an example of Ripple? Are they trying to capitalize and, you know, fat in their own pockets as always? We know that EOS, EOS, the crypto, they got slapped on the wrist. My bet is this, and maybe I'm wrong and I'm open to being wrong and I'll be holding my XRP in the meantime. I think that they're going to get, they're going to reach a settlement. They will pay something, whether it's, you know, millions, a billion, a couple hundred million, like other groups have in the past, which is not uncommon in this market, guys. Just remember Amazon, Tesla, a lot of big organizations and corporations have been sued by the SEC. It's kind of just, you know, part of the course, get your battle scar and keep moving forward. And Ripple has offices globally, their customers, as they said, customers and transaction volume, 80 to 90% of both of those exist out of the United States. So as a United States holder, yes, I do not want XRP to be declared as security. I think all the world's a stage. I'm a bit of a, I guess you could call me a, a weirdo because I have a lot of theories and maybe I am wrong. So please be aware of that and be aware of everybody you're watching for that matter. But I'm, you know, I'm holding, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm pretty comfortable with this, and I think we will make it out of this mess, all right? Also, RippleX did put this out. So the U.S. OCC, again, this is the Office of the Comptroller of Currency, overseeing the entire U.S. banking system. Brian Brooks from Coinbase now is the Acting Comptroller of Currency, etc., and just ensuring a safe and sound national banking system for all. So we know the recent news with you know, these banks and groups being able to validate transactions and connect them to public and private blockchains. And even if it is USDC, that is huge news, guys. Like, I'm very happy. I take this as a big win to connect to blockchain. 
And again, revolutionizing the world of finance does not happen overnight. So if you guys want to read this, um, Ripple did put a, an article about this. This is a Ripple CTO, David Shorts, breaking it down. He goes by Joel Katz on Twitter, as we know. And I highly recommend looking through this. I'm just going to speed through it and give you my quick take. But if you guys do remember the case for the XRP ledger, you understand that XRP is still a, you know, a foundational part of it. Now, even if they issue stable coins, XRP, yes, I know there's a minuscule burn rate, but XRP is still needed. And in terms of tokenomics, that's what I care about as a holder and a, you know, a speculative retail investor. So keeping an eye on this, I encourage you guys, it is above my head to a certain degree. David Short's talking about stable coins in several of his videos on his YouTube channel. And go subscribe to him. He deserves way more subscribers. Um, just an absolute genius. But understanding all of this, they've been ahead of the game. They've been doing this before USDC. They've been doing this before Tether, building the infrastructure. I mean, they have a native integrated decentralized exchange, a DEX, that allows neutral counterparty free digital assets like its native XRP to be seamlessly exchanged to and from issued assets, including stable coins. This is interoperability. They're, you know, they take an agnostic approach and let the best technology, the best assets, the best networks survive and thrive. So that's the way I see the future going. I think they take a very mature approach towards you know even capitalism and going after their competitors but you guys decide for yourselves all right so among its unique features uh is its payment interoperability which enables payments among those holding and receiving assets to minimize costs and work seamlessly when sufficient liquidity is available i you know it kind of reminds me of things like the terminology and i'll be careful saying it because I, I don't want to get in trouble but even like x pool um, and just imagine a giant decentralized exchange of pooled liquidity that can be programmable. And now we have things like Flare, like, man, so we have smart contracts of Ethereum. We have consensus of Avalanche. And now we have overall speed, scalability of the XRP ledger. To me, I'm very confident in this market. And in my opinion, when we go and blast through all time highs, it's not going to be luck. It's because of great technology that made it through these barriers. All right. And let me see if there's anything else I want to cover. Michael Arrington, again, good friends with uh, Brad Garlinghouse, as you know. He also just retweeted this. So SEC Commissioner Hester says enforcement is never a good way to provide clarity. Now, of the SEC, as we know, Hester is called Crypto Mom. I, I will not call her that, but I absolutely love what she's doing for the or absolutely love what she's doing for the space. And very interesting. Again, I'm just keeping an eye on all of this, reading the opinions, the narratives. Um, and yes, I know that, you know, Twitter can be kind of a cesspool and it's hard to get accurate information, but I'm paying close attention to this and watching the commentary of Ripple. They have to be very careful with what they're saying at times like these, but you guys know me and yes, I'm biased and no, I've never been paid by Ripple or any other company for talking about XRP. I just believe in Ripple and I believe what they're standing for. And that is just my personal choice. All right, Michael, Val5 Links, Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, and Gemini, four of the world's most prominent crypto exchanges, experienced technical issues yesterday, Thursday, after the price of Bitcoin shot past $40,000. Now, I personally experienced this firsthand. I was even on Kraken. They froze the order books on other exchanges I was watching. They were at XRP was at $0.32, cents, and Kraken's order books froze, meaning no buyers or sellers were even completing orders, and XRP was at $0.29 cents exactly. I was sharing screenshots. I know this is a common occurrence when Bitcoin blasts through the roof i'm used to coinbase going down i just was not used to some of the other big name exchanges big named exchanges going down with it so it didn't last too long i think i was down um, personally in, in the united states for i don't know maybe 40 minutes but i was just like oh man what's happening and it, you know it's always fun because you always wonder is this the bull run time and time again but as me, I'm just scaling up, taking profits on my long-term crypto will not disappear. And I will still keep a lot of cash on the side just in case we do experience other dips. Because for me, I've been in this market, but I just cannot risk it. And if we dip, I will improve my, you know, obviously my DCA across the board. And if it leaves without me, so be it. I took the chance and I heard he, you know, hold a lot. I'm happy with what's happening, but there's nothing wrong with taking profits, guys. It is your money. All right. So we talked about this. Let me see. Almost done here. Also, Stephen Bull from the Diep or Diep, he changed his name. I just wanted to share this because it is so true. If you believe any of these statements below, you are stupid to say it bluntly. XRP network, you know, the ledger itself is centralized. It is not. It has been proven time and time again, you know, 100 plus, and I'm being conservative with that estimate, um, validators, top down approach. You guys have seen 
Ripple, you can go on their website and even look at the uh, XRP Ledger stats and watch the number of validators and percentage that they've owned through the years going from, you know, 40% to 14% to, it just keeps coming down. And this is just like the internet. Internet started with some governments, some, you know, universities, and now look at it. It is so decentralized, arguably. Now, yes, I know there are some I mean, you know, ISPs, internet service providers that control it. So I guess that might not be the best example. But overall, guys, I'm looking for adoption. I'm looking for an ROI. And that is the point I'm trying to make. Also, market capitalization of XRP is too big for the price to go higher. False. You guys understand multiplier effects. Look at the order books. Um, you know, as liquidity increases, consistent volume, the supply of XRP, even 100 billion, 50 billion, 46 billion. In the scheme of things, is nothing when you are going after a multi-trillion dollar problem. Um, you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to actual financial advisors. You can listen to, you know, Cryptopolis or, you know, anybody that has an estimate for XRP. You can look at the conservative valuation frameworks of $6 to $30 by Robbie Michnik, formerly lead of blockchain at BlackRock and Susan Athey. Or you can listen to some of the, you know, bo more bullish sentiment like, you know, Susie over at uh, Esoteric Trading Solutions as well. Um, some people don't agree with the three to four digit valuation. My mind with all of this is very open. We've never been here. I'm not gonna tell you a price limit because that's a price prediction. We are in uncharted territory. XRP has no real utility, false. Obviously we see what it's doing on a daily basis where there's so many other groups building on it besides Ripple as well. Ripple can create more XRP, false, completely false. And as we know, Stefan Thomas, former CTO of the company Ripple, has said that he redid Bitcoin's entire code base from scratch very familiar with it and yes bitcoin does have the ability unfortunately for double spending to affect it and they know xrp it has no ability to do that whatsoever we talked about you know david schwartz we've played clips of him and stefan thomas's commentary on this very matter because this is such a common fud point thinking xrp is finite they will not create any more guys that is why scarcity will apply in the future as adoption increases so i'm not going anywhere decide for yourselves banks will never hold xrp we've heard this time and time again what happened in july when brian brooks our main guy came into power <laughs> came into power it's not like a dict dictator i like brian brooks but personally what happened in july u.s banks can custody hold crypto assets now you heard my commentary again talking about anders l even pointing out about xrp in ethereum classic the other day there's just a lot of weird things happening and in my opinion this is just a giant game of you know high level institutional chess and i will beat it by holding long term personally and then also here's some commentary from brian, uh i almost said brian brooks brad garling our ceo of ripple um and i just kind of want to show you a few things so i'm not going to litigate the sec's unproven allegations on twitter as you can imagine there are new considerations to what can should be publicly or should be said publicly after the litigation process starts however i would like to address five key questions i've seen why didn't ripple settle with the sec cannot get into specifics but we uh but no, we tried, and I showed you that clip, David Schwartz, in 2019, saying, we've been meeting with you guys essentially every week for the past four years. We tell you what we're doing. You know, are they just trying to come after them for a quick buck or early on sales of XRP being seen or sold as an unregistered security? Very possible. But you guys know my opinion. I think XRP gets out, gets out of this mess, and there will be more, more FUD down the road. I will not be fearing. I will just be accumulating. It's whether XRP is, you know, classified as a, a currency, a medium of exchange. I mean, they've already paid FinCEN years ago, like many groups have. Um, whether it's a utility token, a commodity, etc. That's just my point of view. If you guys disagree, that is completely fine. You do what's best for your money, but I am holding XRP. All right, we'll continue to try with the new administration. XRP is one of the most liquid top to three, top three, top five digital assets globally. 95% of it is traded outside the U.S., Interesting. Ripple has no control over where XRP is listed, who owns it, etc. It is open source and de uh, decentralized. Absolutely. Delisting and halting are two separate things. Most are halting trading with eight different government agencies, each with their own and sometimes opposing views of crypto. Exactly. And even Brian Brooks has said this. All these agencies are trying to get in and regulate. I shared that additional news. Um, I think it was from, what was it? The... Uh, the, what is it, CFTB? I'm going to butcher it. But again, just saying that, you know, the SEC has to stay in its own jurisdiction. It cannot just, you know, regulate every single fintech that it sees fit. And all these groups are competing for that. Um, let's see, we've moved from lack of regulatory clarity to regulatory chaos. I like that. I'm going to use that. 
We expect DCEA to be reintroduced, common sense legislation providing clarity to the entire industry. And if you do not like XRP and you're making fun of this matter, that is a very myopic way of going about it. Because even if you don't hold XRP, if you are, you know, an Ethereum or Bitcoin maxi, you should be rooting that XRP makes it out of this madness, in my opinion, unless you're intimidated by, you know, XRP's success, because this is going to set the standard for all other crypto assets other altcoins that we hold. Now, I have full faith in a lot of assets like, you know, XRP, like ADA. I mean, you know, Cardano, and I know they have a few groups, IOHK, the foundation, and uh, Amergo. They were at the World Economic Forum, just like Ripple. Um, we know Stellar Foundation is on, you know, the Global Cryptocurrency Council with Ripple as well. Um, you know, Visa plays a huge role. I just see a future in this asset. So I am making educated decisions, educated gambles, you could say, to say it bluntly, in this matter. Do investors have faith in Ripple? Yes, we have real shareholders. That is how you own, or that is how you own Ripple Equity, buying our stock, not buying XRP. XRP is not, you know, a share or equity of the company Ripple, and we understand that because it's open source. It's crypto asset. It's decentral. It's a crypto asset. It is decentralized technology. We're disappointed that Tetragon, one of the early investors in Ripple, as we've talked about even you know years ago, who owns 1.5 percent of the company Ripple is seeking to unfairly advantage itself through the SEC's allegations. And, you know, that's sad. I don't know if this is orchestrated. I don't want to, you know, theorize that by any means. But it is just odd timing. You know, they're UK-based, just trying to hit them when they're down. Is it orchestrated FUD? I couldn't tell you. But it is very, very weird. So even, you know, me, my eyebrows are constantly raised every time I'm reading all this stuff. Did you pay customers to use XRP? We have provided some customers, especially first movers, with the incentives to use on-demand liquidity. Remember that um, incentive program? You guys can look at it yourself. It's all public, surprisingly, because Ripple is a private company, but they make a lot of things public, and they are pretty transparent. You can look at this incentive program they had for XRP to essentially incentivize users to start testing and using it. So we've talked about that a lot. It was really exciting. And yes, there's been some crazy conspiracies coming out of it, but who knows? All right. This is building a payments network 101 and totally lawful. Every payments network, PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, etc., has or still uses incentives. Exactly. But, you know, Brad Garlinghouse, I could not ask for probably a better CEO to handle this matter. I would probably lose my cool if I was getting, you know, just boom, jabbed every single time and going through this. He truly is a warrior in this matter. Brad Garlinghouse, we built a product that is the first of its kind. The first, guys. They're not taking somebody else's, you know, blueprint. This is literally innovative, revolutionary technology. This is not copying what Ethereum or Bitcoin or any other payment scheme has ever done before. That's why it's innovative, and that's why I believe it will go, it'll be hero or zero, as I've been saying for a few years on this channel. Integrating new infra infrastructure comes with cost. On-demand liquidity with XRP, the key components, solves real problems with cost, speed, settlements, and that's proven to tune or proven to the tune of billions of dollars. And it already has done that. So this isn't me just speculating. All right. Go look at Bitso, go look at Utility Scan. You can look at, you know, the whole history of XRP transactions through financial institutions, not idiots like me. And that's what I have for you today. Today, no one is being silent, and I'm happy he spoke up and said this, and I'm sure he'll still get attacked by, you know, Bitcoin Maxis or Anthony Pompliano time and time again. Um, but yeah, this is my point, guys. Wanted to read this whole thing. I did retweet it, and you guys can follow him, Brad Garlinghouse, and I'm going to save your time, so, um, but I also recommend right here. So Stephen Boldiep shared this as well. Stuart Eldorati and some commentary as well. And I mean, this guy is very... Very smart. He knows what he's doing. General counsel at Ripple with over 30 years of legal experiences with expertise expertise in banking, regulatory affairs, and complex litigation. This is not just some Twitter lawyer people. If you hear him speak on stage, you know, you'd be like, oh man, this guy knows stuff. And then look at the advisors on Ripple. Look at who joined Ripple in recent months. Sandy O'Connor. We're talking another 30 years of experience in policy making or regulatory affairs, deep ties with Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Please, I think money talks. I think there's very powerful people in position to do some very powerful things. And I think they have a very vested interest in the success of XRP, not just Ripple, XRP specifically. Go look up Glenn Hutchins. Go look up Gary Cohn. These are the people I'm paying attention to. So you guys decide for yourselves if you want to sell, you know, all good. There's no hard feelings, but I am here taking a chance to make some generational wealth. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, sub, and I will see you in the next one.